Okay, so it looks like the camera failed completely, which is not awesome. Way to go. Uh, yes, let's check something else out here. Let's uh, switch, make some switches here, because I don't know what's going on. But welcome to the live stream. Yeah, that is a terrible picture of me in the camera, so let's not show that at all. Let's just, uh, let's get out of that because I don't know what's going on with YouTube and my stream, but my camera does not work. So, you know, c'est la vie. Uh, we are going to just move ahead anyway. So we're gonna be working on this script, right? Um, so I've got two potential scripts here to work on today. One is adding enhancements. Uh, so things that you can do to a screencast <clears throat> to make it more effective, to make it better, to more visually appealing. Uh, this whole series about is about creating screencasts. So I'm not interested in camera video today, but I am interested in things about uh, screencasts. So anything related to that. However, I will say this probably multiple times, not interested in teaching Camtasia specifically. We have stuff to do that, uh, but want to work through some of these ideas here. So I'm going to remove do -do -do these highlights because I don't need it. It's just kind of my, and another document I'm working out of that's just a way to keep things uh, aware that I need to work on this stuff. So, um, wow, quality is not looking good though, is it? Uh, uh, see if I can bump the quality up. There we go. So if your quality is not looking good, you might need to bump to 720. Um, <clears throat> that's the way it is. Uh, so, uh, hopefully you can see the screen. So let's start with adding enhancements. Now, uh, one thing to think about before this, I should probably, uh, that's gonna change everything, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so, I, wow, why did I do that? Okay, I'm still looking at the wrong thing. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up another document for myself. Uh, you can see here, this is uh, the, the actual, the master document. I'm not gonna work in the master document as we're doing this because I think there's too many things that could go wrong. But right before this, Tentatively, I've got a video about controlling the pace. So where I've already taught them, or the idea is I've talked to them about things like, um, <clears throat> hey, you, you know, a as you're going through, you've recorded your audio, you've recorded your video. First things you're gonna do is kind of clean up the mistakes, clean up the big sections, and then um, kind of see what goes from there. Um, because, you know, we want to get, then get pacing going, and I think that's uh, kind of an important thing is to give people an idea of how to pace their video. They don't want to necessarily just be um, going along at a breakneck pace, but there's things you can do in terms of adding content in, extending frames, speeding up, uh, or slowing down for that matter, uh, the pace of uh, your particular clips. Uh, so that's all important, all stuff we covered, but now in enhancements, it's thinking about all the other things that you can add. So uh, is there something else we can add to a video? And I've got my outline line going here. So, you know, we could add images to enhance our video, screen video. We can, um, if you've typed anything, this is what I'm thinking, fixing typing, like, uh, you know, make it so you don't show people that you're typing in a screencast video. Are you adding transitions? Is there on-screen text, which, uh, probably lower thirds would be a sub point. Um, not talking about captions here, talk about that later. Uh, you know, pointing out other important details. This would be, let's say, uh, let's see, call out. Maybe this is a spotlight. I'm, I'm using very Camtasia ish terms, uh, but we'd want to think about different ways to, to talk about this for anyone who is. Um, going to look at this this video and who maybe they're not using Camtasia. Uh, so I'm kind of multitasking here. I'm kind of disappointed my camera doesn't work. Um, it just keeps freezing. So I'm not sure why, uh, but we're gonna, I'm gonna try to see if I can get it back up here. Yeah, it looks like it's still frozen, um, which is too bad. So all you're gonna see is my screen today. I apologize for that. Uh, it's just gonna be the way it is. So, okay, so let's see, <clears throat> is there anything else? And if you wanna comment, uh, if you're looking at YouTube, uh, you can actually go in and uh, add a comment so that 
you know, hopefully I can pick up on that. Maybe we can make this a little bit collaborative. Um, I thought about turning on sharing or uh, commenting, but I think it's just going to become too messy too quickly. And I'd prefer to keep this somewhat somewhat clean in documents. So, um, okay, anything else that we need to talk about for adding enhancements? Uh, try and think through, think through the list. I guess... Uh, <clears throat> We could have a category, uh, uh, what's the name called? Mouse cursor, that seems so kind of antiquated. Just cursor effects, that's a very Camtasia, Camtasia thing. Um, you know, that could be like uh, uh, highlighting, uh, click effects. Uh, again, I what I don't want to do is I don't want to make this the end all be all of everything you can do. I want to provide practical advice um, and so what is the practical advice? And again, add your comments in here if there's something, an enhancement to a screencast video, just for this purpose, to screencast videos. Um, things that you'd want to see to make things effective. Um, something that, again, talking to, if you're talking to a new person, uh, what is it that you, advice you'd give them about adding anything to their video? So they've got their video recording done, uh, what would they do? Hey, Will, uh, text to clarify something you said in the audio but doesn't have time to fix. That's a great suggestion. So uh, we'll call this uh, fix it text uh, covering. Uh, and then again, this is just outline. We'll start writing the script here in a second. So fix it text uh, for mistakes. And that could be, I'm assuming clips uh, if like, or clicks wrong click, something said, etc. right? So it's a good idea. Hopefully, I mean, if they're editing, hopefully they've they caught that and fixed it, but it obviously happens, especially if you're recording separately uh, or recording at the same time audio and video. Like I'm making a ton of, ton of mistakes here. So um, other tips, motion, I don't know if this is in the right place. Motion is uh, not, it's an enhancement, but it's really done during the recording. Oh yeah, blurring. So let's put this under, so it's kind of a important detail. It's kind of the opposite of that, right? Let's say um, blocking sensitive or restricted information. And that we'd have blurring um, yeah, just kind of blocking out slash covering. But I like that. That's that's really great. I mean, we could say up here, this could be uh, highlighting an area. Um, I should probably bring up Camtasia so I can look. And again, I'm, my goal here is not to teach Camtasia. Uh, we've got lots of tutorials to do that. Um, yeah, good to anticipate blurring of answer can get really tricky, especially if you're moving around, right? So that's a good one to uh, watch for movement so that it should be planned in advance. I, that's great advice because uh, I have done that so many times where I didn't think about the movement and then you've got to animate the blur um, and it becomes kind of problematic uh, because it's hard to animate those things. It takes a lot more time. So, <clears throat> good good suggestion. Um, okay, so uh, I think that's probably a good. I mean, this is already if I this is one script. It's already gave me pretty long, which I want to try to avoid doing. So I'm going back here. Where do I end up? Um, so I got a script that I wrote before about just before again about controlling pace. It's not done. Uh, kind of got stuck on it, uh, so I wanted to see where kind of leads off. Okay, so uh, I don't have a really good conclusion, so I might want to put. Some, I'm going to have to add a conclusion on this previous document to lead into this one. Um, but basically, again, if you weren't here, we're going to talk about the. We've already talked about the kind of the base cutting out, getting rid of stuff, or adding some stuff for pacing. Um, so once you've done 
complete, well, once you've, do we want to say completed or done? Because I don't want to give them a sense that they can't do this. I mean, it's kind of sequential, uh, but I don't necessarily want them to be done with all their editing. How about as you're editing, you guys will see how bad I type and talk. Editing your screencast, you'll want to start thinking about ways to help your viewer. And uh, I know they're in the learning community. There's a big debate now, or it's been going on for a while. Should we call people learners? Um, because my audience uh, is not necessarily training people, um, and it could be marketing people, all sorts of people, I'm just gonna go with viewer, because that's ultimately you're thinking about the viewer, whether they're a learner, a buyer, a persona, whatever they are, they're gonna view this video, hopefully. Um, or your video, in more particular. You want to start thinking about the ways to help your viewer understand your content and better, maybe, and where they should focus their attention. So kind of the premise here being is we're going to help them understand something better. And we want to, using things like highlights, callouts, uh, you know, even on screen text, we can draw attention. So um, I think that's an important way to distinguish this. Uh, so where they should focus their attention. There are many ways that you can do this. While we can't cover all of them in, let's take a look at a few different options that can be useful in most screencasts. Uh, uh, yeah, so most screencasts, and that actually makes me think, um, if that's the case, images, I'm gonna move that down, because I don't think that fits that, that particular thing, kind of like motion, right? Uh, images, motion, motion is really good. Oh yeah, we, I was thinking blur, like, not blur, but, um, uh, behaviors, kind of this animation stuff, so that might be good. Let me put this down here before I forget. Scroll up so you guys can see. Uh, so this would be animation, this would be uh, Camtasia behaviors, and that might be other things. Um, so transitions would actually fall in this too, huh? Uh, so maybe I can remove those up here. So a couple of thoughts. So Ah, this makes me think that there's two videos here, um, and I'm not sure which one goes first. Um, so let's talk about, we'll do the adding enhancements first. I think fixing typing, I'm not sure where this goes. I'm gonna move it down here as well, because I don't, I don't know where I want it, uh, but I don't think it fits in this kind of, what I've just defined in this first sentence. Uh, as you're editing your screencast, you'll want to start thinking about ways to help your viewer understand your content better and where they should focus their attention. There are many ways you can, that you can do this while we can cover, while we, this is why I read, I often read out loud when I'm doing my scripts, uh, just because I know that's, it's going to be out loud. Uh, while we can't cover all of them, let's take a look at a few different options that can be useful in most screencasts. So we're going to set the bar here that we're not going to, we're not going to cover everything. Um, Keep this two to three minutes, hopefully. Give them a few suggestions, a few kind of applications, um, and then hopefully give them something they can build off. Again, new uh, new users are the focus. Never, hope, one to, we'll say one to 10 screencasts they've made. Okay, um, I'm gonna start with this idea of pointing out because I think that makes sense. Um, I'm almost wondering if, uh, will your suggestion, I really like this idea, fix it for text. Uh, we'll, we'll see where that fits. Um, so, okay, so if we want to talk about this, let's first look at a few ideas to get your, to draw, to get, to draw, to draw your user's attention on screen. So one of the things I've, I've kind of hypothesized about and one of the things I've put forward in a previous script is this idea of don't use your mouse cursor for this purpose. Um, ah, 
I don't like this. I don't like this sentence. But uh, again, just get it out of the head, right? Uh, many programs. Uh, I don't. I say that a lot. Uh, first, you. Uh, no, we already say first. So we're looking first at a few ideas that draw your attention. Um, one easy way to draw attention is to add something to to add uh, to, to, I want to say I don't want to say something it's too generic but it's not it's not really information it's not because we're talking about like squares arrows to add a call out to point out or focus the viewer uh, saying the same I feel like I'm saying the same thing multiple times so um, keep thinking here keep thinking here uh, for instance if there is a detail on the screen that might not easily be seen or get it might get lost as you move as you uh, move around the screen you can add drawings graphics graphics to the screen to the video like an arrow, a uh, a box. Ugh, this is th I put this script off purposely because it was going to be hard. Uh, one thing you might want to talk about is when you use call out versus spotlight versus highlighting. Yup. Um, yeah. So that's an interesting question. Do you decide that up front? Uh, ideally, you have an idea. Ideally, the user's gone through and storyboarded this their, their thing. Uh, so they wrote their script, ideally. They storyboarded, and then they know approximately what they're going to do. Um, maybe I'm not setting a strong enough case for this. I wonder if I'm... I'm trying to dump, jump into the details because I want to get through it. I want to get to these things. But I, I wonder if I'm... So if I'm a new user, I probably don't understand why I would do any of this, right? Like, uh, calling it out... Yeah, you're going to point something out, but that doesn't feel like a strong argument to actually enhance my screencast. Um, so, like I said, I, I, I think this is uh, this is one of the ch more challenging scripts I've had to write because we're talking about some very specific things, yet we want to give them enough reasoning here. Um, Maybe what I'll do, let's change this. We can't, let's take a different option. Let's narrow that some. So let's take a, let's look at a few uh, on a uh, few ways you can add. So we're going to talk about the additive here. So that would be so instead of we won't talk about blurring. I mean it's technically you're adding something, but we'll take away kind of the take away here. Uh, you can add information to guide direct and uh, oh yeah give them an example I like that that's that's a good idea uh, guy direct and inform the, the, the viewer uh, there are many ways you can do this well I can't cut wrong let's take a look if you ways you can add information guy direct and inform into ah uh, and provide to and provide clarity to your viewer. So one of the things this means, Will, is if uh, we're going to do an example, <clears throat> one of the things to think about now here in the scripting process is uh, I need to have an example for that in mind, right? So we, uh, I, unfortunately, I tend to write in too many generalities and not enough specifics, so I'm trying to be better about writing in specifics here. Um, for instance, Imagine, hmm, so what would be a good example? Uh, from what they say they should really be watching, yep, 
uh, if there's an, something eye-catching going on that distracts the user. I wonder if we could be very meta here uh, in thinking about this screencast and being like, they're watching a screencast about screencasting. Um, yeah, do I want to go with a bad example or do I just want to be very specific here? Let's, so what I'm doing here, let's do this. Let's put this here, oops, control Z. Uh, let's put a comment, lead with a bad example that needs enhancements. So that way we'll think about it. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, just what what would be a good example of that? And, and I don't necessarily have to have that right now. It's just helpful to think about like, oh, uh, here's a, an example of a project. I'm trying to think of one that I've seen recently, um, <laughs> like a screencast of how to chat during a YouTube video. Yeah, it's, uh, oh gosh. Uh, I don't know if this, I don't even know if this is good. So, um, I'm trying not to tap because I realize my microphone's going to pick that up. Uh, for instance, let's take a look. I mean, we can we can just call it out, right? Let's take a look at this example. Then we'll do example plays. Now, let's add. We won't call out what they are yet. Let's add a few enhancements to make it more understandable, to make it clear, make it, make it more clear. New example plays. So that way, yeah, I think, I think so. That way they're seeing it. Um, hopefully that only takes, maybe it's something short, so like 15 seconds each. Then that's it's, that's uh, thirty seconds. Okay. Um, as you design your screencast, you'll screencat the ever ubiquitous screencat. It will knock your stuff off your desk. As you design your screencast, you'll want to start thinking about what information will need emphasis or uh, extra, you'll see how bad I type here, uh, how, or extra information guidance. Uh, what's the, what are we, we giving these, these users? Uh, we'll, need ec we'll need emphasis or extra um, focus to help your viewer follow along. make sense of what they are watching. All right. A number of, uh, that's so bad. Uh, so for those who have joined us that are watching now, uh, we're working on a screencast script, working out loud here. So this is total garbage in terms of what we're writing. Uh, just trying to get the ideas out ahead. Looking, Will has been fantastic at providing some ideas where basically you get to throw in ideas as I type this stuff out. Um, the script is about adding enhancements to a screencast. You can see kind of the stuff what's on screen already. Um, it's not teaching Camtasia. It is teaching screencasting. Uh, so some of this stuff we're going to push down because it's old. Uh, just, as you design your screencast, you want to start thinking about what information you'll need to emphasize or what information will need emphasis or extra focus to help your viewer to make sense of what they're watching. There are many ways you can do this, but let's look at a few common ones you can use right away. So let's start with the proposition because these people are new. We want to get them going. I don't want to overburden them with something really complex yet. Um, that can come maybe later, or that could be uh, a whole different series. Um, so let's get them something. So, um, so, I mean, 
is it true that the easy one of the easiest ways would be just to add an arrow or a box? I kind of feel like that's true. Like, I don't have to do much to make that work. It doesn't, I mean, to be real, I don't think it necessarily is always the best looking, but it's an easy way to do it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that out there first. If you guys have opinions, let me know. Um, okay, so one of the fastest and easiest ways to draw attention for your user or to point emphasis to gain emphasis to add em to add emphasis is to use a what do we call it's an annotation uh, yeah, which is, we can call it an annotation. Would that make sense if you're not in Camtasia? Uh, maybe. Well, uh, added emphasis is to use an annotation like uh, an arrow, a, what do we, a lie? What do you call a shape? Shape, a call out. In fact, I call something call out earlier and I don't know if I should do that because call it um, an outline I like actually will I like outline and I think I like it better than shape because I think it's more descriptive uh, like an arrow an outline a call out or should we even say text I'm a little hesitant to, to say text only because when you start putting layers on layers of text, right? And, and, and there's times when it's appropriate, but if I say, hey, listen to me, look at the screen, read this text, I worry about cognitive load, regardless of the type of video you're making. So do I wanna go there? We're, we'll put it in for now. And as the rule goes, we can cut it out later. So we're gonna highlight it yellow as a warning. Um, spotlight, uh, so, uh, yeah, Jane, I think you're absolutely right. I think we'll get to spotlights later as a different separate type. Um, focusing on the annotations first is kind of the easiest, fastest first thing. But then it, later in the video, we'll talk, talk about uh, spotlights, highlights, uh, maybe the text, maybe I'll leave the text out for later. Um, and then go down here. And then uh, Will brought up like blurring and stuff like that. So, uh, which may be a different. Uh, we might, depending on the length of this, we might put in a different video here. Uh, let's let's just do or call. Out. We'll get the text later because I'm having doubts. You guys get to see my existential crisis as I write. Uh, you like it. each of these has a. I want to say something like they have a purpose, but that's duh. One of the fastest and easiest ways to draw attention for your user or to add emphasis. Do I need to say for your user here? I don't know. One of the fastest, easiest ways to draw attention or to add emphasis is to use an annotation, like an arrow, an outline, or a call out. So now probably we should give them a use case. For instance, I like the word for instance, and I need to find something else in my vocabulary. For example, if you, if there is a specific object or place on the screen, you want to make sure that your viewer looks at, but may not already have their eyes drawn there. Or if you want to reinforce location on screen, you can use an arrow to point this out. Now, and if I'm saying it poorly, you guys can tell me, but I'm, I'm also going to clean it up. Um, <laughs> well, we can be existential crisis partners, Will. Uh, okay, so drawn to, uh, dr have their eye, but may not already have their eyes drawn to. Is that what you're thinking? Uh, make sure that your viewers look at 
You want to make sure that your your viewers are drawn to. I think that would be better. Um, I'm assuming this one drawn to, which but may not already have their eyes there. Make sure that your viewers is drawn to, but may not already have their eyes there. Or if you want to reinforce location on the screen, you, you can use an arrow to point. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Like I, I mentioned uh, for Jane, I think if you're still here, uh, I mentioned to Will earlier that this is one of the, the scripts I've been putting off because I think it's one of the harder ones simply because it's a lot of different things and it's kind of very specific. So why else might we do, what else might we need to tell someone about using annotations? Um, okay, they're fast and easy. You can add stuff. Um, are there any warnings or gotchas with annotations? Um, so anything else we need to add? For example, one of the fastest and easiest ways to draw attention to or to add emphasis is to use an annotation like an arrow or a call, an, an outline or a call out. For example, if there's a specific object or place on the screen, you want to make sure that your viewer is drawn to but may not already have their eyes there. Or if you want to reinforce the location on the screen, you can always use an arrow to point this out. Um, keep in is are we worried about it covering anything a new user i don't think so um keep in mind is there anything they need to keep in mind keep in mind that arrows i'm just i'm totally spitballing i'm not sure that this is going to even stay um these i know that these objects should be um obvious Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I think that's a good thing, both of you. Like, opacity, you know, is it covering something up? Is it, where should it point? Um, it's a really interesting, interesting thought. Uh, sh should be obvious. Like, we don't want it to be, too, and stand out against the background of your screen. So, and I'll get to, you get to, as you place the callouts, um, be mindful of, be mindful, keep in mind, be mindful, uh, watch where you place the object so you don't cover up important information or cover up or block. So, uh, oh, scroll, uh, block important information. Cause, so that's, that's good as a suggestion. Nope. Um, we don't want to cover up, don't cover up names of, so don't cover up, I'm thinking like, okay, so text, right? Like there's a button on a text. And you don't want to cover up that. If that button's a thing you're going to click, don't cover it up. If there's uh, a label, uh, don't cover button. Uh, don't cover the name, the labels of or text of the things you are clicking on or talking about. A little terse, but... Um, so... Uh, Jane, the mouse circling stuff, I talk about in a previous script, and I talk about that in recording. So this is really in the editing process. So um, there, there probably needs to be something. Again, I'm not trying to teach Camtasia, so there, but there are some things about mouse cursor stuff. Um, like I, I mentioned in recording, make your mouse cursor bigger. But in this case, if you've, if you've already circled with your mouse cursor, eh, not much you can do. Uh, I mean, you can hide it, you can do some other stuff, but for this point, it's really in the editing process. The idea is to clarify what your viewer is looking at and 
I feel like I'm writing very tersely here, and it will probably take some cleanup because I know how I read. Uh, it is clarify what your viewer is to look at without adding more confusion. I love drafting because I can get rid of anything stupid later. Um, okay, so pretty good here for like the call out. Um, another type, another way to add emphasis. Uh, Seeding up the video with a lot of typing. Yes, I do have that as one of the things to get to. Um, kind of, uh, where is it? We'll, we'll get to that. Um, Cause that's, I think that's a really good point. Um, I do, I do guess I talk about it a little bit in kind of the main, um, the main, I've got a video all about kind of the, kind of the first thing I do when I'm editing is I start my video uh, and I just start uh, going through and cutting out the big, like the mistakes or if I got something that's just dead air, just kind of cut that out and, you know, start trying to match it to my audio, including I do talk about um, uh, speeding up, slowing down. So I do cover that in another one. So the kind of big thing is go through and make your major kind of wholesale cuts, get it to start to match up with your audio. And now the purpose of this one is to really start thinking about, I've got this basic video that, yeah, you could watch it, but how do I make it better? What are the things I can now enhance it with? Uh, you know, everything that, so think about it as being kind of an additive process, right? Like I'm not cutting away or removing anything now or speeding things up or, uh, which kind of remove, takes stuff away sort of by making it faster, less time, um, or making things slower or adding, uh, you know, like, uh, what, what am I thinking about? Um, drawing out the length of a particular clip, you know, extending frames, really just that, again, that the adding stuff. So another way to add emphasis to your video is, okay, so here's a question for you guys. Zoom, oh, zooming's a good one. Um, I'm gonna add that here. How would you, because I, I don't do a lot of spotlight or highlight stuff. Um, what are the, if you're, if you're teaching someone new, how likely is it that you're going to be doing that. Um, is that, it feels a little, maybe it's a little advanced. I wanna be careful and mindful of my user group, but is it too advanced or is it something that you think, uh, oh, so focusing on a foiling out a form, that's a good. Um, so, okay, and in Camtasia, there's two types, right? There is like the mouse cursor spotlight, which I'm sure gets used. Some people probably like it. Um, but I don't, I don't know, it's such a limited space. And then there's kind of, I think, isn't there just us, you could just do a spotlight, like where everything else is kind of dim. Um, and which one would you recommend? I'm curious. So got my Camtasia open here. Spotlight, probably should have a project open. That'd make this a lot easier. Uh, And the other question I'll ask, um, do you, either of you know if other programs have that kind of thing? Okay, Spotlight and Mac kind of just adds like a light effect across the screen, which very dramatic, but not really what I'm looking for, Windows Spotlight. Um, okay, so if you're gonna be focused on a particular part of the screen for an extended period, but don't wanna zoom in, you can Spotlight, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, oh, there's an annotation. It's an, actually an annotation, isn't it? Uh, that annotation, wow. Okay, Camtasia, you're acting really funky. So, uh, go figure. Um, okay, so let's, yeah, let's do a spotlight, right? Let's actually, let's, let's do zooming and spotlighting together, because I think to your point, Will, if you don't wanna zoom in, right, like you can spotlight, but it's probably a good practice to zoom in um, from a focus perspective. So for instance, I, on my Mac, I've got it set up, so hopefully you'll see this. Like I can zoom in on my screen, if 
by just double clicking. Now that's a very manual effect for Mac. Uh, it's not something, if I can, I, can I get out of it? Okay, it's not something, I, like I wouldn't do that effect during my recording, but after the fact I could, it just makes things much more interesting. Um, so yeah, let's so let's do this. We want we got zoom here, and we've got spotlight. We're gonna work those together. Let's pull them out of here. I'm gonna get rid of this because that was old. Okay, so oh, it's a, it's like a zoo in here. So for those who are watching now, just so you know, we're working out loud here, working on a script about enhancing a screencast video. So this is assuming you've done all the video editing and writing, uh, you've done the rec audio recording, you're, you've done some basic editing like cutting stuff out, and now uh, we are going to enhance it. So we're talking, we just talked about using callouts, we are now gonna talk about using Zoom and Spotlight, um, and we'll go from there. So welcome, thanks for joining. Uh, it is, this is what you're gonna get, me talking out loud to myself for the next while as I write, so, uh, Feel free to add comments. So another way to emphasize your video is to change, hmm, it's not really change, is to zoom in to a, how do we want to say this? Describing zooming in. Zooming in to focus attention. We've talked about that attention before. Uh, is to limit, uh, isolate, Mm-hmm. Change, but maybe we just talk about it as change, right? We zoom in, uh, is to zoom in on a portion of your video to isolate. I'm ready, just reading comments here. Want to focus on the spreadsheet that open as possible. Is to zoom in on a portion of your video to isolate what your viewer can see, this ensures that not only will they be looking at the right, at the correct portion uh, area of the screen, it also uh, provides clarity with the enlarged view. Uh, that sounds really gobbledygooky, uh, blah, but uh, drafting. Uh, correct, uh, helps provide clarity with the enlarged view. Um, I'm gonna just make a note for myself here. Warnings, uh, zoom more than 100%. So I want to make sure we're some again best add some best practices to this, um, which I kind of think here we might need to go back to the call out stuff and talk about color a little bit um, to ensure that we, uh, as you zoom in, you'll want to make sure that the zoom is smooth. So I see what you're saying, Will. Um, sure that not only will be looking at correctly, it's going to provide clarity to be able to view small text at a larger size. And it might be, to be fair, it could be more than text. It could be a button. Like, you know, I think about here, uh, way up here, there's these buttons here. But if I zoom in, you can see the the actual icons better, and uh, you know you, you know your audiences, so or hopefully they will. Um, get into this next point as you zoom in. You're gonna wanna uh, uh, ch -ch -ch, you wanna make sure that the zoom is smooth, <sighs> not jarring, because the idea like when you zoom in, you don't want it to just jump. I think jump cut. A jump zoom is really weird because you lose context. So maybe that's what I need to say. Uh, you want to make sure that your viewer can easily follow where the zoom 
is focusing. Oh no, can't, I can't get ca crash reports for Camtasia. Oh no, uh, focusing so that um, they don't lose context of what they are looking at on screen. This can usually, mm, not usually, uh, it's going to be on the screen. I use Grammarly and it likes to add all these things. That sometimes I just ignore it because I'm going to be speaking it. Uh, looking at on the screen, um, you can do this by adding, uh, not adding, it's really by using the um, it's a, it's kind of a transition, right? Like by animating this, by uh, having, I don't want to use too specific a language here because they might not know these words. You can do this by having the zoom in, zoom uh, animate as it goes, as it enlarges, as it enlarges mm, part of the screen. This one, okay, so we've got, you zoom in, you're gonna wanna make sure it's easy to follow. Um, I'm just looking through you guys' notes as a, a few best practices. Maybe this is really all best practices here. So we've established in kind of a sentence or two, um, oh, so uh, yeah, so I'll finish my thought. So we're establishing that like here, it's. This set paragraph, it's like, yep, you can zoom in. Um, we're gonna add the buttons here, large size. Um, there are a few best practices to be aware of as you add zooms to your, uh, as you zoom in or out of your screencast. Uh, gosh, there just gets to be so many warnings here because another one is watching your, well, no, I guess that's part of the 100% watching. I'm gonna put it anyways, watch your screen size. And Jane, uh, clarify what you're meaning by the panning to another position rather than zoom out and zoom back in again. Um, are you saying that you should never zoom out again or just like zoom in, pan, and then zoom out? Um, like I'd like to know because that, that's an interesting thing. Um, so let's do this. So there are a few best practices to be aware of as you zoom in at or out, out of your screencast. As you zoom in, you want to make sure that your viewer can easily follow where the zoom is focusing. So uh, that so that they don't so they don't. so that they don't lose context of what they're looking at on screen. You can do this by having the zoom animate as it enlarges avoid giving the viewer yes. Uh, so is there a specific way you would suggest not giving them vertigo? I mean, I think the zooming in works. Is there like a, the animation of it works? Is there another good way that you would suggest doing that? Is the pan the right pan? So basically you want to move the the screen as you go is that what you're thinking okay gotcha gotcha so yeah so so don't don't start panning around and making kind of doing the whip um, and when you and then probably also don't just stay zoomed in all the time like just sitting there zoomed in right and when you're done focusing in an area. Be sure to zoom out before moving to focus on a different portion of your screencast. So I'm gonna, Will, I like that the best zoom in or out will feel seamless 
to your viewer and they if done well they may hardly notice that you used a zoom so something like that right like this idea and we'll end kind of end the section on that uh, <clears throat> but I think there's a few more things um, that we probably want to say about zooming okay so what else here I like I like I like where we're headed this is good stuff uh, it's super easy to, to get long here so I want to be careful of that um, I just so you guys know kind of I'll here just to switch uh, this is the actual my this is my master document uh, so this is this is where we're going. Uh, I think I'm, I've crested now with this script that you guys are helping with, uh, 13,000 words. Um, not one script, not, not one script. Um, it's, it's multiple, hopefully short scripts, but it's all one big project. Uh, so when you're done focusing in an area, be sure to zoom out before moving to focus. Okay. Uh, so for for both of you, staying zoomed in too long, what's the, is there a range? Like, and look, none of the, like any of these are be as best practices that we're setting, uh, none of it's hard and fast, a, a hard and fast rule, right? So uh, like I can imagine maybe somebody's gonna zoom in and they're gonna stay zoomed in, but as long as they're not moving around, that sounds okay. Um, but if there's guidance here, you know, like, yeah, don't stay zoomed in for too long, and we say too long is probably 30 seconds. We can, we can figure out if that makes sense in here. Uh, so I'm gonna read this back a little bit to get my head back here. Uh, there are a few best practices to be aware. This is why I read. Aware of as you zoom in or out of your screencast. As you zoom in, you wanna make sure that your viewer can easily follow where the zoom is focusing. So that, so, I think I do need that, that. So that they don't lose context of what they're looking at on the screen. You can do this by having the zoom animate as it enlarges. And when you're done focusing in an area, be sure to zoom out before moving to focus on a different portion of your screen, or if the zoom is no longer needed. The best zoom in, the best zooms, zooms is such a funny word when the more I say it. The best zooms will feel seamless. Uh, let's say whether in or out will feel seamless to your viewer. If done well, they may hardly notice that you zoomed, that you zoomed at all. You guys are troopers, by the way. Thank you so much. I uh, really, really appreciate you guys sticking around. Um, okay, so zoom in, zoom, anything else about zooms? that we'd want to say to these new screencasters about enhancing. Um, it's going to sure correct screen size, provide clarity, see things bigger. We've told them to zoom out. We've told them to... Mm, da, da, da. Now, question, I mean, I can see where, do we want to say anything about pans? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna revisit this when I'm not talking to myself. Uh, I'm just gonna put the role of a pan. Okay, there, there might be a little bit more here, but I'll, I'll come back to it and see if there's something else. Okay, so we've got callouts, we've got zooming pans. Oh, we do need these warnings in here. Uh, as you're, as you, you're adding zooms, 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 zooms to your screencast, you will need to be mindful there is a limit to how far you should zoom into your screen. Oh gosh, this, this is where it gets uh, really, really hard, right? Like, um, 
do I talk about resolution here? I've talked about it occasionally, uh, but I don't know if I'm going to talk about resol resolution. <clears throat> yeah, you can zoom out so things aren't showing. I mean, those are some good ideas. Uh, Screencast from TechSmith where I record at a higher screen size. Yeah, we do that all the time. We try to record bigger um, just so we have, just so you have something to work with, right? Like, uh, so this is where I'm kind of, so. <clears throat> so this is really dependent device. If you recorded at a larger size, then you have edited, then you are editing your video at, you will have more flexibility to zoom in and retain a high quality of video. If you zoom in too far, usually more than anything more, usually more than 100%. Oops. <clears throat> if you zoom in too far, or usually more than 100%, the quality of your video's image may deteriorate. Uh, yeah, deteriorate. Um, can't spell. Uh, da -da -da. One interesting thing about it is which of these do you, you do based on the amount of time you have for production? Oh yeah, if you have one hour versus ten, uh, yeah, and I, I think that's a really good right. Like so, ideally, what we could do here in the script is build these kind of in order of effort. So like again, I think annotations are pretty quick and easy. Put those first. I don't know if Zoom is second um, because I feel like zooming. I mean, it's, I guess it doesn't have to take a long, long time. You're adding in and out points. Um, it might take a little while to make it look good, uh, but is that more or less than adding things like lower thirds or other text or blurring or blocking or cursor effects? I, I don't know. I don't know. So you guys can tell me. Um, usually more than 100% percent made you sure in some videos, I have pushed up as high as 120% during a zoom, but this, but uh, so basically I've done that, right? I've gone up to 120%, but was willing to sacrifice my dignity. No, uh, sacrifice. Uh, da, 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 da quality I want to say is it quality is it clarity the quality of the image for improved viewer understanding again I, I'll, I'll have to fix this all up but so I have pushed up as high pushed I have zoomed I don't pushed up it seems weird I'm not doing push up I have zoomed in To as zoomed in as high as a hundred and twenty percent during said of the original size. In some videos, I've zoomed in as uh, let's just do this. I have zoomed in as high as one hundred twenty percent of the original size. That is kind of convoluted, but it, the idea is there. I want it. Um, I have scaled. Yeah, that's a good. See, look, you guys, you guys are just gonna write this. I, maybe I should turn on, give you guys the link to the Google Doc, and we can you can type for me. Uh, I've scaled in as high as 120 percent of the original size, but was willing to sacrifice the quality of the image for improved viewer understanding. Sure, we'll we'll read it again, and um, I think this kind of probably needs some kind of conclusion conclusion statement. Maybe um, now yeah, we'll, we'll fix it. Anything else? Zooming. Uh, got the warning, watch your screen size. That's kind of the same thing. Um, do Is there an opposite problem here where if I zoom out, 
or I stay zoomed out, that it's hard to see. I mean, we kind of talk about that. I don't know if that's such a big deal. I think that's an easier one to overcome if it's like, oh, it's too small. You can you just zoom in other than, I mean, it's it's on the screen. Just zoom in. Okay, that makes sense. To, uh, I'm not making sense here, I don't think, but I don't think it's a problem. So, okay, let's move on. We've got... And uh, for all those that have been with me, uh, Will and Jane, feel free to drop out any time. I'm going to go until noon. Uh, for uh, someone, someone just dropped out. We go goodbye. Um, if you are the new per, if there's a new person here, uh, this is what we're doing. We're writing. Um, yeah, zooming is probably not as critical now as it was back when re resolutions were worse. I don't know. Um, I mean, if he's recording on like a Retina Mac Retina. You're going to get this really, like, or you're recording on, like, on 4K, and you're not producing the 4K. I think zooming actually maybe becomes more critical. Now, I, I only have a 1920 by 1080 screen, so I kind of record that size. I produce it 1280 by 720, uh, so it's not too bad. But if you're going to go big, yeah, so that's the thing. And I don't know, I kind of mentioned that earlier. I don't know if I necessarily want to get into that here, but maybe... Maybe it's a good use case, right? Like, maybe that that goes up here. Um, and let me know if you guys can can you if you can read the text, okay? Because I can always zoom in on Google Docs a little bit more. Um, probably another time. We'll just add it, will, and if it's uh, uh, if it's a uh, something get cut, it get it gets cut. Um, when you may want to. Zoom is if you are if you re are recording on a high resolution device. We'll call it, uh, yeah, it could, could be. I mean, you could be recording an iPad that you know. Yeah, beginners do produce videos at really high resolutions, and they don't because they don't necessarily know. Like oh I'm they and everyone's talking 4K oh we gotta go 4K 4K no it's a screen video you don't probably need to go 4K at this point I mean it, it future proof is proofs your video a little bit but who can watch it and who can edit it it's hard to do at that size um, we'll get there but it's I don't think we're quite there yet another time when you may want to zoom is if you're recording on a high resolution device because uh, and producing to a smaller size. For instance, a 4K monitor, but editing. I've been told not to use. No, producing's a fine. Uh, no, producing's not a good word here because. And here's the kind of interesting thing. I've been talking with um, uh, video or my the video team here, and per, when you're producing a video, you're actually that could be all the editing process, all the stuff leading up to actually render and publishing a video. Um, so I'm going to use publishing to be consistent with other things in the document. Publishing to a smaller size, for instance, a 4K monitor, but editing at a small, much, I don't even need to say much, at a smaller size, like, even, man, uh, let's say 1920 by 1080. Yep, that's right. The f text and... But text, buttons, and most objects on the screen will appear. Uh, I, I'm glad I don't get like red card for gratuitous use of a comma. I use them way too much. Uh, probably better than not enough. Hmm, I don't know. The text, buttons, and most objects on the screen will appear. small and most likely difficult to, to see. We'll say see instead of read. Okay, cool. So maybe we can cover that. Best practices. Um, we go through as you zoom, to, to focus area, zoom, warnings. I think we got that. Boom. Okay, so now... Uh, 
think that's all duplicate. We can move on to if Spotlight is one. And again, uh, <laughs> Jaina, thank you both guys. I, I, I feel like you're helping me way more than I think I'm giving here. So uh, I've, I've been working on this all these scripts all month and my head is about to, uh, you know, it's, you get to a point where like, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I can do it. Uh, so, okay, so uh, problem with Spotlight is I don't know if, uh, I don't know if either of you use like Adobe Rush, Premiere, or any other video tools. I know, Jane, you're so loyal to Camtasia, but I'm, I know you have experience. So what I want to know, does Spotlight transfer? I mean, I'm okay talking about it as a kind of uniquely Camtasia thing, but what I'm worried about is that if I talk about Spotlight, it's hard to do if is it hard to do other places and the academy as kind of a mantra is we're teaching these skills that are somewhat product agnostic because we want to help people get better generally and i know i can point the, for spotlight like i feel like i could point them to a call out video in the tutorial section and so I, I, that's my hesitation about doing it plus given that i've already got a page and a half of text do I want to to spend time on this um, or does it become maybe a because I mean because what I could do as well is I don't have to have it be in the video I could make something to go along as a supporting document to the video that like a downloadable maybe it's a checklist or maybe it's a list just a hey here are five other ways you could do this um, thoughts about whether we should include Spotlight or some of these others. I do like this idea here, um, but but I think that's a different concept. Um, maybe give a general kind of overview to Spotlight, cursor effects, just and not get into a bunch of detail. Just call out that like, hey, your program might be able to allow you to do things like to block out all of the screen except. Um, but I, I think I want to have a video about like these things maybe separately. To keep this one short. Um, I think that's something people use in Premiere. Are you picking out of a crowd? Yeah, I just don't know how easy it is, right? Like, I I know you could do it in Premiere. I'm sure you could do it in After Effects. But is it something that, like, a beginner screencaster is going to do? I mean, and to be fair, I'm probably making a lot of assumptions that most of the people doing screencasting, if they're using another tool which shall not be named, are they coming to watch TechSmith Academy stuff? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just don't know how much emphasis to put on it but maybe I'll, again, maybe we'll kind of say, yeah, yeah. Other ways that you can enhance your video and draw attention of your users. There are, there are lots of other ways that you can enhance your videos and draw attention Draw the attention of your of yours, yours truly. Attention of your viewers, um, for instance. And maybe this is a good time thinking about the visuals. Um, maybe what we do is just kind of like a, this is like a survey, right? Like a sampler of like, and on screen it could be like we'll just show a couple, we'll just show examples, like without without getting details of how to use it or kind of best practices because. Mm, I mean, unless there's something really like strong, like, oh my gosh, this will ruin your video if you do this. Like, I think the motion sickness stuff with Zoom is, and kind of what we talked about is really important, but Spotlight, I'm just like, yeah, I just, you highlight your stuff, right? Uh, for instance, you can, some programs will allow, and that's usually my euphemism for Camtasia. Some programs, hint, wink, wink, Camtasia, uh, will allow you to add a spotlight to your content. This will add, uh, uh, this will block out, uh, 
it's not really blocking out, we'll add, because it's kind of transparent. We'll leave anything inside the spotlight normal and any, I don't know if normal is the right word, anything outside of it either slightly blurred or do I say opaque, darkened? Obscured, I think obscured, or I don't even think I need to say well, uh, outside of it either. Anything out of it, anything outside of it will be obscured. I think just obscured. Sounds like we're dealing with uh, the obscurio from the. Uh, uh, gosh, I can't think of the movie. The uh, Harry Potter, not Harry Potter. The other movies. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked because my brain wanders. Um, third person, welcome to, we're writing a script. Join your, add comments. Tell me what we should say about spotlighting in screencast. Uh, this leaves anything outside, inside the spotlight normal and anything outside of, of, it, obsc of it obscured. Do I need to say giving an emphasis? I don't know. Uh, this whole thing's about emphasis. Some programs will allow you to add a spotlight to your content. This leaves anything inside the spotlight normal and anything outside of it obscured. Uh, is there a time or two um, that, like, real quick, great, this is great for, and Will, you said, uh, great when, uh, when the multiple records that look alike on screen. Uh, well, are you are you saying like so it provides consistency across like different recordings? Um, you want to de-emphasize content or block out content that may be distracting at the same. I'm trying to think of when, like, when this would be true, right? Like, maybe if I've got something from working in, let's say, a program, and there's motion on the screen, and I don't want them to see the mode, pay attention to the motion. Um, maybe there's twenty thousand options, and I want to reduce the number of options. Maybe I want to do an emphasis on content that may be distracting. Maybe that's enough. Let's always make a note. Uh, any other use cases? And I can talk to, maybe that's a question we can ask, I can ask on Twitter or something too. Uh, another option is to add cursor effects. Uh, so similar items at the screen at the same time. So like, I'm, uh, so maybe if you're like filling out, I don't know, I'm spitballing here, Will, uh, a form. No, well. You have two options and they look a similar. I'm trying to think like uh, there's two buttons and maybe the buttons look the same. So for instance, I'm streaming using OBS and it's all just button, 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 button. Um, there's a start, start like, like this. Uh, I don't know if I can share. Eh, I won't share it, but like there's a start or stop streaming. There's stop recording, uh, which two stops right next to each other, right? Like which one do I click? I could see that. So yeah. Uh, let me just put this in the notes. I'll come. We'll come back to it. Um, maybe when there are similar. You know, I'm gonna just copy and paste. Cool. Great idea. Uh, but we'll come back to it. So another option to add a cursor is to add cursor effects to. Um, The name of the thing is also the thing. So do I want to say cursor effects or just effects? Add effects to your cursor. Oh yeah, multiple search examples. That's really good. Multiple search results. That's a very specific, uh, very applicable example. I think that helps. Um, another option is to add effects to your cursor. 
do we need to? And I've, this, I'm asking a lot of questions that come in my head that I've, you know, I've dealt with some of these already, I think, but is it wor it's worth asking now that there's f folks here, do, is cursor understandable or should I say mouse cursor as in being very specific or does, is it just assumed that every, everyone knows now it's a mouse cursor? Um, I'd be interested to know what you guys, your experiences have been. Uh, another option is to add effects to your cursor like a highlight. that emphasizes where your cursor is at on the screen or click effects that show when you have taken when you have clicked such like when you've clicked right uh, Is it that simple? I think so. I don't use a lot of cursor effects. The highlight, I guess if I was doing some a lot of movement with my mouse, the, the cursor would be, highlight would be interesting. My problem with click effects um, <clears throat> is that if I have a click effect and I click and you see a red ring coming off of it, that's the one that's common in, uh, I think, the default in Camtasia. It does kind of say something happened but you don't know as a viewer, is it a right click? Is it a left click? Is it a um, control click? I don't know. It's it, something happened, but it, there's no guide there, right? So I, I, I hesitate to suggest that, but it's, I think it can be effective, especially when there's lots of actions to be taken, um, which actually makes me want to think that... I'm just going to make a note here, uh, overuse, <laughs> uh, yeah, perhaps change the size if you've not changed it before recording. I do suggest changing it before recording, um, but maybe it doesn't help, it doesn't hurt here to say it again, like, you know, uh, in some cases, in some programs, you may also be able to change the size or opacity of your cursor, making it uh, this is helpful if you didn't change the size before recording to make it larger and easier to follow. Follow on the screen. Now, here's the thing: we can, we're gonna. I don't know if this is the right place to do it, but we're gonna do it. Uh, you can also with opacity. I don't know why paragraph break. I don't know if I think. I don't think I need it with opacity. You can also hide. Uh, you can change with opacity. I don't know. You can also. I want to say you can change opacity to basically get it out of the way. It's not really drawing emphasis, but um, unless you talked with your mouse, circling stuff around, that would be a, a big thing. You can also change the opacity. I say that you can change opacity. Um, one useful. How about it? We just call it. Let's just call it a tip. One useful tip is to change the opacity of your cursor. Now is it? I'm, this is more of a language thing. Is it changing your opacity of your cursor to be transparent, or should I just say change your cursor to be transparent? I mean, it's changing the opacity, but is it just better to call it out? One useful tip is to make your trans. Let's just say make your cursor transparent to get it out of way of anything important it might be covering. So the idea that we're uh, making it invisible. Um, the, my, Jane, my, my hesitation with invisible in this case, uh, I, it's a fine word. I, I think in most programs they would talk about opacity or they talk about transparency. Um, 
I mean, I could clarify, like we could say make it transparent or, you know, invisible. If we think, if we think the audience might need that. Um, so Will, uh, so yeah, Will, that's a really interesting question. And I think we do, I, I, I'm looking like my stream might be frozen guys. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I have been talking about, I talk a lot about audience up front, but this is interesting what you're saying, right? Should we talk, is there a difference between your audience? Um, uh, and I'd, I'd like to know what you think. Like, are you saying the IT staff should have more annotation than say clinical staff in your example? Or I mean, how do you, I don't know if I'm the judge of that. So, um, you say IT would need less. Is that now? Here's the question: Is that because they are more technical and have better knowledge, or is it because the con the type of content? Um, my guess is it's going to be because they know software. If you say click the save icon, you don't need to point it out. Yeah, I mean, um, okay. So thinking about, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> So this is an interesting quandary, right? Because I don't know, in terms of knowing audience, my audience is, could be very broad. Um, so maybe there just needs to be something like, hey, in using any of these things, be mindful of your, don't forget about your audience. Remember them, you should have defined, I won't say remember them, but be mind, think about your audience. What, what do they need? Where do they need help, right? Um, and do we want to say that here? Probably up, uh, up higher here, right? Like, I think, um, maybe, so I'm going to get rid of these. I got those covered. Um, so I think this is kind of this overuse conversation I want to have with the viewer. It, it, and maybe it needs to be up early uh, to your to your point, Will, that we want to, like, with all effects, and I think this is true of anything that we do in Camtasia that or any video editing, effects should be sparing, right? We want this to, be, like, if you're doing something in your video and you're doing it all the time, it, it's going to overwhelm the user. It's not going to be effective. Or an arrow, right? Like, if there's always an arrow on screen, at uh, what point do I, I ignore the arrow? Uh, and so, uh, again, I don't know where this falls in, in this particular script that we're working on, but I want to add something. So I'm just going to add it here, knowing that, you know, this is a document. I can we can we can modify it. So I'm going to change this to. I think if I do a heading four, that way it's just for me that's a subhead. Um, as you are applying any, we'll, we'll write it as it's going to be below this, uh, so it kind of comes towards the end. As you're applying any of these effects to your screencast, your, to your video, you should apply them sparingly. It's easy to overuse each and every use effects to the point where they are no longer enhancing your video, but actually, but causing distraction and taking away from your goal. This is a good time to think about your audience, their familiarity with your topic, and what they might already know, and make decisions based on what is going to be best for them. So I feel like that's a pretty good, strong statement. Um, 
So I've got some other things here that I still want to get into. I think this makes for a pretty good video uh, as what we've covered. And I think there's probably this next stuff. I'll figure out how this lumps together. Uh, then we'll get this stuff kind of, I think, so there's probably two more videos here, which is fine. Um, I, I, it looks like my, I'm going to stop this. Eh. I'm going to, can you hear me? That's the one thing. Because uh, it's, uh, my, it looks like things froze. Maybe try refreshing. Okay, so you can hear me, but my screen's frozen. So um, maybe what we'll do, I'm gonna, uh, uh, what if I cut this? Did that, yeah. Um, let's see, does, I'm not getting the same, I'm not seeing movement. So I think what I'll do is, uh, cause I do wanna wrap up here in about 12 minutes. Um, I think what I'll do I, I want to do a quick read through of this, and I don't think you need to see the screen for this. I'm going to read through what we wrote. This is part of my process. Um, Will, thank you so much. Uh, you're super helpful. Um, but Jane, if you can stick around, I'm going to read through this. If you have any thoughts as I read through it, this is my kind of, as I write a script, this is my process. I write, 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 fiddle, 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 and then I read it out loud and I fiddle some more. Um, Jane, if you don't know Will, he is fantastic. And, uh, we didn't know each other, but we went to the same school for graduate school. So I've known Will now virtually for, for many years. And Will, if you're still around, I might be coming to Kansas City if you're still there uh, in September. So maybe we'll get to meet up. Um, okay, so I'm going to read through this. I'm going to do it. Normally what I'll do is I'll read through out loud once, and then I'll read it out loud a second time to get an, an essence of timing. But we'll fix it as we go. So here we go. <clears throat> As you're editing your screencast, you'll want to start thinking about ways to help your viewer understand your content better and where they should focus their attention. There are many ways that you can do this. While we can't cover all of them, let's take a look at a few ways you can add information to guide, direct, and provide clarity to your viewers. For instance, let's take a look at this example. Now let's add a few enhancements to make it more clear. As you design your screencast, you'll want to start thinking about what information will need emphasis or extra focus to help your viewers to make sense of what they're watching. There are many ways you can do this, but let's look at a few common ones you can use right away. One of the fastest and easiest ways to draw attention or to add emphasis is to use an annotation like an arrow, an outline, or a callout. For example, if there's a specific object or place on your screen you want to make sure that your viewer is drawn to, but may not already have their eyes there, or if you want to reinforce the location on a screen, you can use an arrow to point this out. Keep in mind that these objects should be obvious and stand out against the background of your screen. I'm going to make a note here. I, I want to revisit this paragraph. I didn't love it. Um, so. But we'll come back to it. As you place the callouts, watch where you place the object. So, okay, I, I, I don't like the word object. Watch where you place it. I'm just gonna say it because they're just gonna see something right there. Watch where you place it so you don't cover up or block important information. Don't cover up the labels or text of the things you are clicking or talking about. The idea is to clarify what your viewers to look at without adding more confusion. Another way to add emphasis to your video is to zoom in on a portion of your screen of your video. Uh, I'm gonna say screen. That just felt very natural. Video was not. Portion of your screen to isolate what your viewer can see. This ensures that not only will not only will be will they. This ensures that not only will they be looking at the correct area of the screen, it also provides clarity to be able to view small text and buttons at a larger size. Another time when you may want to zoom in. Zoom in is if you are recording on a high resolution device and publishing to a smaller size. Period that so I can take a breath. For instance, a 4K monitor, for instance, uh, I feel, uh, so another time you may want to zoom in is if you're recording on a high resolution device and publishing to a smaller size. For instance, 
if you're recording on a say for instance a lot for instance if you're recording on a 4k monitor but editing at a smaller size like 1920 by 1080 the tech for instance oh okay i see how i'm supposed to read that another time when you may want to zoom in is if you're recording on a high resolution device and publishing to a smaller size for instance if you're recording on a 4k monitor but editing at a smaller size like 1920 by 1080. The text buttons, the text buttons, and most objects on the screen will appear small and be difficult to see. There are a few best practices to be aware of as you zoom in and uh, zoom in and out of your screencast. As you zoom in, you want to make sure that your viewer can easily follow where the zoom is focusing, so that they don't lose context of what they're looking at on the screen. You can do this by having the zoom animate as it enlarges. And when you're done focusing in on an area, be sure to zoom out before moving to focus on a different portion of your screencast, or if the zoom is no longer needed. As, you, as you're adding zooms to your screencast, there is a limit of how far you should zoom in uh, how far you should zoom into your screen. If you record it at a larger size and then are, you are editing at your video at, uh, da, 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 da. if you're recording it at a larger size than you are editing your video at, I don't know if I need their video editing at, you'll have more flexibility to zoom in and retain a higher quality. If you zoom in too far, usually more than 100% of the more than 100%, the quality of your video's image may deteriorate. I've scaled in as high, I've scaled in, I'm gonna just highlight that, I don't love it. I've, I've scaled my video, I think you have to say my, I've scaled videos as high, I've scaled videos as high as 120% of the original size but was willing to sacrifice the quality of the image for an, for an improved for an improved viewer for, for nope not an, for improved viewer understanding. The best zooms, whether in or out, will feel seamless to your viewer. If done well, they may hardly notice that you zoomed at all. There are lots of other ways that you can enhance your video and draw the attention of your viewers. For instance, some programs will allow you to add a spotlight to your content. This leaves anything inside the spotlight normal and anything outside of it obscured. This is great when you want to de-emphasize content or block out content that may be distracting. Another option is to add effects to your cursor, like a highlight that emphasizes where your cursor is at on the screen, or click effects that show when you're, you've clicked. In some programs, you may be able to change this. I feel like this has got to be a new paragraph. In some programs, you may also be able to change the size or opacity of your cursor. This is helpful if you didn't change the size before recording to make it larger and easier to follow on the screen. One useful tip is to make your cursor transparent or invisible to get it out of the way of anything important it might be covering. As you are applying any of these effects to your video, you should apply them sparingly. It's easy to overuse effects to a point where they're no longer enhancing your video, but causing distractions or taking away from your goal. This is a good time to think about your audience, their familiarity with the topic, and what they might already know, and make decisions based on what is going to be best for them. And then, make decisions on based on what's gonna be best for them. And then there's probably some here, little wrapping con uh, conclusion, right? Something to transition me to the next video. All right, whew, that's a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a meaty, 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 meaty script, which is good, um, but there's a lot to it, uh, which not a problem, not a problem to have a lot to it. Um, I think that's, I think that's it for today. Uh, so, okay, James, feedback here. With references to when editing at smaller size, you can use zoom to your advantages as you scale to 100%, giving image quality, best image quality. So let's find that here.
Help me understand what you're saying, Jane. I just think I should replace that. Uh, reference when editing. That's when editing. Nope, that's not it. Oh, go up, go up. But when editing a smaller size. Um, oh yeah, the word scaled. I, it's, scaled feels like a weird word, right? I have. I mean, that's technically what you're doing. I just don't know if I love it. I have scaled videos as a high. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Independently, it sounds fine when I read it. When I was reading it out loud, I didn't love it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this is this is the process, though, right? We go through, we, we read, we edit, we change. Um, if you're watching, if you, a couple of people just joined in, uh, yeah, scaled might be strange for beginners, but if you're just watching... Um, I'm just working on the script. I'm working out loud. I've literally been writing it. I've uh, had a few people here helping out with just providing suggestions, feedback as I talk basically through what I'm doing. I feel like we got through this kind of one script, um, which is great. I mean, it's probably a three-minute script. I uh, got some great enhancements and suggestions. Um, and so I think we're about to, to wrap things up here if you're just joining us. Um, I appreciate uh, Will Finley was here earlier, and Jane's here providing lots of feedback. Um, no, Jane, don't worry about writing faster. What you guys did was great. I I don't know. I don't even know if this is the best way to do this. Um, maybe you know. I, I just wanted. I wanted to try it. I needed input because. Uh, in my role, I'm kind of on this little island right now by myself, just writing and. Uh, having community feedback into this process it's interesting like i think what you and will provided has made this better than what i can do on my own um and i'm not looking for stuff from people to be like oh do my work for me uh, i can i can do this i know enough but i want that input to, to really just uh just you know, how do we enhance it right how do i what am i not thinking about it's been a long time since i was a beginner and so Trying to figure that out. I, I think scaled. I might do some thesaurus work here. I don't want to say zoomed again. I say zoom a lot in that section. It's a decent word. I think it's. Uh, I mean, I don't think it'll be confusing. I feel like people know about scaling images, so I think we'll leave it for now. You know, when I there's going to be a whole other editing process, so uh, it might get changed, but. I think this is good. So thank you, everyone who's joined. Um, Jane, thank you again for all your help. Thanks to Will. And uh, I'm going to call it. I think I'm happy with we got this script. There's a little bit. It'll, it'll be fun once we get to product the production point, right? Like, we'll get to the production point, and then we'll see how it goes. Uh, you can. I'm going to try to turn my camera back on. I don't think it's going to work. Nope, it's still frozen for whatever reason. Gosh darn it. I am not going to turn my camera on because I am looking down and it's a terrible picture. So anyways, thanks everybody. I'm stopping the stream, but we'll see you guys again. I'll, maybe we'll, we'll do this again for sure.